<laughs> okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming for this wonderful panel discussion. Um, being hosted by Rao, uh, Rise Above Women's Organization. And I think it's around really looking at some of the key important work that is being done around organizing movement building for uh, marginalized groups in Zimbabwe. And I think uh, part of the key important work is really inevitably pushing for policy change and acceptance of, of uh, all persons in their diversity, but looking at what are some of the key steps and what are some of the challenges that are hindering us getting there. Uh, being supported by um, ARASA through the Love Alliance uh, project. So uh, thank you to the wonderful panelists. I will ask everyone before I introduce myself. I think that's only very polite to welcome the kids first before introducing yourself as a moderator. To just briefly tell us in, you know, uh, a mouthful your name and some of the um, important and lovely work that you're doing within your organization currently. So I'll start with you. Okay, um, morning. My name is DK. That's like my activist street name. <laughs> but um, my name and my ID is Diana Bertrand. And I have been seriously involved in the uh, OBQ movement since around 2012. So, uh, in the OBQ movement, you know, I'm now a dinosaur. I'm now a dinosaur. And uh, over the, the years I've, I've done, I've had the privilege of working with um, other OBQ activists that were there. Before I even joined the work, um, people that I, I view as my mentors, and I'm looking at one right now. <laughs> and um, currently, I am working, um, I'm wearing like a lot of pets, but the, the work that I'm doing currently right now that excites me the most is uh, as the national coordinator of an LBQ collective in Zimbabwe. Um, the people who started this collective have moved on to other things, um, but I'm just happy that we are in a space where we are able to have like that generational knowledge of knowing this is where we started, this is where we are, and we will still have people who will be there uh, taking the movement further. Um, I've also had collaborative work with the Coalition of African Lesbians. Uh, currently, we have collaborations with LBQ women in Germany. We have other regional collaborations that we're doing as well as a, as a, as a, as a collective. And it's also um, amazing work. I have been with the other foundation as a peer reviewer. So, I've had a pretty exciting life <laughs> <laughs> in this activism space. <laughs> Lovely, JK. Yeah. A dinosaur. Over to you. Um, hi, uh, my name is Gilda. Um, I also go by Ash or RC, depending on where I'm at, what I'm doing. Um, I am a creative, multi-talented creative. Um, if DK is a dinosaur, I've kind of just been the wind going <laughs> around, going about. Um, my experience in activism has mostly been in the arts and creative sectors. That's where I've been making the most noise, organizing open mics here and there, um, writing. I've got a blog um, that I occasionally post at, and a podcast as well. And um, yeah, that's me. Lovely. Lovely, lovely. Thanks a lot. Over to you, Nidhi. Okay, um, my name is Nidhi, Nidhi Piri. Uh, I'm a sex worker. So I work with all women advocacy. Uh, it's a sex work movement. Um, I've been working uh, 
in that area for over five years now, uh, linking the uh, what uh, sex workers uh, are facing to HIV, and then we're also doing lobbying for decrim. Um, we also work with LPQ women because we've got sex workers who identify as um, LPQ women, so we are working in partnership with that. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, lovely to meet you all, and um, it's just amazing how you know we're drawing from different kind of elements in terms of movement building. DK, you mentioned something around working in collectives and how that's important and what are some of the key benefits that come from working in collectives. Gilda, you mentioned around, you know, making noise in arts. And for me, I believe also making noise is important. Being angry is important because revelations and movements have never been won by being the good girls behind desks and things like that. So noise is important as well. And Eddie, you're mentioning something around working, you know, um, deeply around marginalized communities like the sex workers and the LBQ community and how it's important to link the struggles between um, the different movements and the different communities and what that means um, in terms of not looking at different bodies in isolation. So saying, oh, if I'm a sex worker, my struggles are more important than but to find the interlinkages around that. So I think uh, moving on to, to, I just want to hear a little bit uh, from you, Gilda, I'll start with you, around when it comes to organizing, movement building, sometimes we, we, we also get stuck in, in these words, organizing, movement building, building communities, capacity strengthening, uh, no. Think about it. When it comes to bringing about change, right? When it comes to bringing about change and when it comes to thinking around how can I influence this person from thinking the way they're thinking to thinking the way I would want them to think about me and our bodies and our lives, what do you think is missing? What do you think is missing? And what do you think are some of the forces that are working against us so that we don't make that noise that would give us the change so that we where do you think is i don't know the hazy bit of it all so let's throw movement building knowledge creation and blah 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 out of the way let's think about yeah um, what what is missing okay so when you were asking the question i was thinking back to um when we were organizing a particular series of what eventually became a series of open mics. Um, and it started off as just a bunch of us friends um, who were sitting thinking, oh, we just need a new place to be reciting our poetry and spoken word art, right? But I remember there had been this um, budding or like this mini explosion of like Christian poets that had eventually pushed us out of the spaces that we had been um, presenting at, performing at. And so we, as we were like chilling, just having snacks, we decided to just like form a little thing at a place that we usually used to frequent. And um, as far as like making noise is concerned, sometimes what gets in the way is um, shame. Mm -hmm. Shame like, for example, as a black queer woman um, your work, what could stop you from putting your work out there is the literal shame, like what are these people going to say? Mm -hmm. In the case of this open mic, there were parents who used to frequent there. And so just thinking at the back of our heads, like what are they going to say? I'm out here jumping on a stage and proclaiming like through this poem that I am a raging homosexual. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what are they going to think? Like, how are they going to see me? Is our show going to get cancelled? It's that fear of also being ostracized. Mm -hmm. So I'd say fear and shame get in the way of, like, making this noise and putting our voices out there. Um, in my experience, those have been the strongest too, yeah. Mm -hmm. And really, sorry, just to, to, to go a bit deeper, around like what you're saying, the fear and the shame. 
if we look at it even broader than just you organizing within the circles around the poetry and the spaces that you've managed to create yourself, what do you think, how do you think the fear and the shame also plays out in terms of even when you get to organizational level, to activist level, and trying to get into a space where we're looking at the ministries of health and whatever, because I get the, the sense that you're also talking about our own internalized fear. Yes which is something that is a hindrance for us. How far do you think that fear and that shame goes in terms of hindering us getting to those spaces? It goes to like crazy lengths because I'm talking about, you know, like the internalized shame that you're talking Mm. about. It affects how you then present yourself. Mm. Like when you are approaching a space, your approach could be from a tokumbira or, you know, like Mm. humbling yourself and stopping yourself from like, busting through the doors and claiming the space that is yours right you mm-hmm. then tend to start negotiating mm-hmm. and yeah. that affects the, the 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 kind of momentum that you bring with you in your activism mm-hmm. yeah no, definitely thanks yeah I, I i really appreciate how you said we often have to humble ourselves and <laughs> try and beg for spaces that we be, we have to and then um dk uh I think I want I want you to share around what do you think are some of the challenges, especially around working with collectives, not only collectives. What are some of the challenges that we encounter, firstly internally as LBQ organizations and persons in terms of, you know, achieving what we want to do, the, the change that we want to see, the policies we want to shift. Where do you think the challenges are working in collectors, working with women's rights organizations, approaching the ministries, approaching, working in global spaces, you know, when we go to the Genevas and just think broadly around that. What do you think some of the key issues are? Okay, so I think the major um, um, challenge in my view, this is like my personal view, is the fact that the movement in itself, like the LBQ movement in itself, um, has sort of like we were kicked out in, in a broader women's movement, not not like up in your face kicking out, but it was like a subtle kicking out, mm-hmm. and then we got kicked out and we got embraced by the sex worker. Um, uh, movement because they also had been kicked out so it then became an LBQ and sex worker movement at some point and along the way we then sort of like disintegrated Mm. it now became an LBQ movement a sex worker movement a broader uh, women's rights movement but if we are to actually go back into history um, the Stonewall riots were started by a trans yeah. woman, yeah. Yeah. right? Uh, all those other movements, uh, one million, uh, a thousand women march, what, what, what march? It was women in their diversity working yeah. together, not uh, women in their silos working individually. So I actually feel like this disintegration that is there now. Um, I don't know whether it's because of egos or it's because of money or it's because of a different sense of um, achievement that we want to get. Uh, it's something that chika gara pasi chika gara chika uni san. No, it's also same LBQ. I am a sex worker. This is the broader women's movement. What is this? The one thing that we all have in common? We are women we are marginalized, first and foremost. So, and we also have to know that our enemy is not each other. We are fighting patriarchy, we are fighting a system. How do you fight a system individually? So, I think these are the things that then we actually have to uh, sit down and say, we have to know what we fight. We have to know the battles that we have to win 
and we have to know the milestones. Uh, we need to know the milestones that we've reached so far. And we also need to set the milestones that we need to get to where we want. And we also need to know the kind of battles that we need to win until we have uh, won the, uh, the, the bigger war that we are at at the moment. So this is something that um, is not only like a Zimbabwean thing, mm -hmm. it's also a regional thing. Um, funny enough, um, I was in Europe uh, for uh, working with other LBQ uh, uh, organizations in, in Europe. They also have closed out their space for um, people who identify differently from what they're used to. Um, because we were in a space and then we were, would then introduce myself. Oh, my name is DK, my pronoun, I answer to she or they, and then they're like, hey, <laughs> what? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> so once you don't identify as a she, to them, you become an other person. Mm -hmm. You have become another force that is supposed to be excluded from this. But we need all the voices. Mm -hmm. We need to be. Yes, we can't be. We can't be saying sixty years ago people were we were toy toy and we toy toy now, mm -hmm. right? It's a we different can't, situation. Yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes the situation. You know, when the when the situation requires you to be radical, then be as radical as possible. If you need to be diplomatic in a space, then be diplomatic in that space. Yeah. I actually I actually admire what um, our does. Mm -hmm. You never get in a space where our is and they say an argument without like baking evidence. Mm -hmm. If there's a policy that supports their point, they will tell you there's a policy like this Subsection, what paragraph? I don't even know how to do this paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, sometimes we need to step away from using our emotions when we want, especially when it comes to policy change. We need to move away from using our, our emotions. We need to uh, step away from going into space in uh, blind. But coming back to you, DK, what are yeah. What are some of the things that are being thrown at us in terms of this is us? I, I, I hear you around us being a collective, moving together and to achieve our change, right? What are we fighting against? What is it that, that we are challenging? I know we, 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 we say, we'll say policy. It's so broad. Uh, we'll say but what is it that is being thrown at us that we are unable to fight against right now because of our divisions? I would, for example, say some of the red flags that come with, if we want to engage, for example, with the global fund policies and spaces, there's bureaucracy, there's red tapes, there's, you know, how things are done. And yet, in terms of the way we organize, it might not work. You know, those are things that we are fighting against. What are some of the things that you think we are fight that we are constantly having to fight, even within the broader women's rights movement? Um, so, our fight as LBQ women in actually have more intersections between LBQ yeah. and sexual mm. it's, it's the fact that we first have to fight for um, a, a seat mm. at the table, yeah. right? Um, a, a very good LBQ woman also says we can't fight for a seat at the table, let's make our own table. No. <laughs> but True. I, I feel like we, we can then first find the seat mm. at the table that's the already. Because making our own table means we are going to start from scratch, whereas we can build from um, a table that's already there. Yes, that's so yeah. first we fight the exclusion that we are having from the broader women's movement. Mm. Then we get into it. And then we talk about our issues. 
um, these days I'm reading so much about climate change. So, mm, um, true. Yeah. So you, you'll find that climate change, yes, affects everyone. But then being first marginalized because of my anatomy, I am then marginalized by the people with the same anatomy mm. as me, mm. simply based on who I love and or who I sleep with. Yeah. So now first I have to fight for that acceptance with the people that I relate to most. Mm. And then fight to then be able to get married for me is like the least of my mm. I have to be able to have a law that protects me if I get fired for my corporate job. Mm. To say we are under the impression or we know that you are a lesbian and you live with your partner and this, 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 you're fired. I have to be able to have a law that protects me. Currently in Zimbabwe, I only have to rely on if I take my company to the courts, what is the judge's opinion about my getting fired? Mm. Because there is no law that protects me. And now it goes to the discretion of the judge to say, ah, you can't fire someone based on their sexual mm. orientation. Based on precedence. It's like there is a case that mm. came in and mm. this person was saying this. But I need that protection. Mm. I need to be protected from being evicted from my house because of my sexuality or gender identity. Mm. I need to be protected from uh, when I go get um, when I go get tested. So this is like a personal uh, thing for me because I at one time there was there was a how can I say this? There was a lot of people who had like STIs within the LGBTQ movement mm. in itself. So just to be careful I said um, let me go get tested because of my anatomy as a woman, I can live with an STI or an STD for a long time and I won't even know it. By the time that it shows, I'm already, you know, uh, halfway dead. <laughs> Not dead, but you know what I mean? <laughs> but, <laughs> so I went um, to try and just say, uh, so the, the question, you know what the other the, the questions are? Mm. Like, so when did you last have sex? sex. And who's the man that you read? I, I had an sex with the man. So why, why do you want to get tested? Mm. I should be able to be in a space where I want to get screened for this STI. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who I'm having sex with or how I'm having it. Mm -hmm. right? Don't worry about my sexual practices. Don't worry about my sexual uh, partners. Give me the service that I want mm. so that I can just go. So these are the things that I feel like are the most important things um, for me as an LGBTQ woman. Marriage, that's something else. But I need to be in a society that I can live to my full capacity as a citizen. Mm. Oh, thank you. Lovely take it. And um, I love the way you touched on not only looking at policies um, around health that need to be accepting, that need to be inclusive of a person, you know, as they are, there, there are times when, you know, you don't need to question someone who's an STI, are you a man or a woman? Mm -hmm. It's an STI, just treat me or something. And then, um, and then also looking at how we need to align ourselves and the work that we do, not only to issues around health, but on a broader spectrum, to say you're talking about climate change, you're talking about labor issues, so that when we engage in different spaces, people are not just looking at our bodies and you know ourselves just as these people who really want to talk about SRH and HIV, but we are also linked to other struggles and other uh, spaces like that. Um, thank you for that. Um, Nedi, coming to you, um, I think we, 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 we heard um, from DK was mentioning around the work with um, 
sex workers and using that intersectional approach. What are some of the challenges you've seen working over the past five years uh, organizing around issues of marginalized persons, let me say, which is sex workers and LBQ uh, persons. I think um, one of the key things that I would even share with you before you come in was how, yes, we, 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 we became a movement because of intersecting struggles. So when the sex workers went to march, we had the miniscape marches together, we had, um, you, you know, all those um, direct action initiators. And then, you know the backlash that comes with, then there was this overlap. People were like, we don't know who's a sex worker, who's a lesbian, who's doing what, you're all doing each other. <laughs> you know, it became a situation where we became valified, not just, you know, but because of our, it, it was like looking at sex work as a bad thing. And then you want to add on the LBQ, like you're adding, you know, more into this pot of sin that people. Mm -hmm. And one of the key issues that we had to deal with at that time was religion. It wasn't only just uh, the issues around the ministries and the police, but it was also the religious fraternity. So some, what are some of the key challenges you have had to, to face as you have been working with sex workers and also with LBQ identifying sex workers in the movement? So, in the you need to understand that the sex workers turns out not zita. Yeah, So, you need to and then I'll be mixing, which is in the case of... So, you find that, like you mentioned, issue a religion. You find that people say, it's not a religion, it's not a But the funny thing is, sex work is the oldest profession. Yeah. After that, you've got the LBQ women. Before I tell, like an LBQ person, she's a per she's she's a she, mm. and it, mm. she will ad identify as a she. So you find with you already issues of patriarchy, mm. they will affect us. At the future, how one that seat that we want, like DK mentioned, we are going to to make noise to get a seat which is supposed to be ours. Mm. After that, we also have issues the policy. Already we are a criminalized society mm. before we do anything. So we need to fight for decrim. Mm. You find with the LBQ community already in H Tonzi, we don't want that. Mm. We're not going to mention names because I just told it already. So you find with already it's a challenge on its own. Mm. So you find with now it's a movement of sex workers and LBQ women, like a very big pot of sinners and unwanted people. If you want to make noise, they are never going to hear you. And in the KP society, actually, mm. already you find Kuti, there are power struggles. Yeah. Uh, you find Kuti the um, G, what's now G B, la la la, mm. who exclude the L. Mm. And then you find Kuti sex workers. They are also male sex workers. They are going to make noise by virtue of them being male. Already they are taking. Mm. Uh, my spaces. Mm -hmm. um, you find it the KP forum. Before we made noise, panga paka itwa kuti chairperson, male, vice chairperson, male. We had to make noise kuti tagato fara. We were fighting because we are just one big. Even they say they are going to say we are one big pot of sinners. Panga mm -hmm. mm. We had to make noise for that mm -hmm. because already we are going to be excluded. So they are going mm -hmm. to talk about condoms, what not. They are going to forget particular terms mm -hmm. for the LBQ. They are going to talk about um, what they want as male sex workers, but then our a period poverty. Mm -hmm. They don't understand all mm -hmm. those things. Mm -hmm. And you also find with the um, broader women um, organizations, mm -hmm. yeah. they'll, they'll never talk to you and then you make sense to them. Mm -hmm. For example, if you go to my meetings, like we um, yes, we want them because we are never going to, to, to make our own table. Mm -hmm. They're the people who have to, uh, to accept us. But then when you go there, they will look at you like, so, mm -hmm. they will put emotions. 
that person is a sex worker who has so done any more wrong with them. So already, you we only like a valid point. They look at you that is that person you're putting still, and then you're you're an LBQ woman. You're there for them or what? It doesn't make sense. So you find that already, say that she has a religion, what not? Us as women, to not to terrorize her and pass already. Because people are going to choose to know in any church position, young. I intend to depend on the same room in a sex worker. I intend to depend on the same room in a LPQ. To not only my examples, I wonder if I could see me to like my meeting, but the person what we expect I could see just because she's a woman, I shall be on this point. And I should tell you that. So you find kuti tega as women already. So there is need for that. I don't know kuti are we supposed to be collaborating with them for us or barufa na kuto tanga watu itauti watu accept it for us for who we are. Okay. Um, you did mention definitely what the 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 religious bit and also just um. The, the, the discrimination and the stigma that comes from others who are also maybe in the same spaces that mm -hmm. we are all fighting for policy change. And uh, what are some of the key things? My challenges are, are how an experience for my sex workers and some OBQ when it comes to protection in the law mm -hmm. and how that affects their issues, their access to health and things like that. What are maybe some one or two key challenges in terms of protection? I would even just go specifically kind of the police. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not just to the no judicial system at it up, but even just basically what I'm police and protection. Okay. And what does that mean in terms of their access to different spaces? Right. So you find when it comes to police reporting child, mm -hmm. uh, specifically on sex workers, mm -hmm. they will mm -hmm. never go and report. But you find pretty they are being harassed out there. Mm -hmm. When they go to uh, when they go and report and it's when they go for for example, or or by the moment you say good in and ring up because you find that there are six figures who are bad best car. The moment you say and ring up on turns are your own in the waters. Even to a society child, when you want to go and report, can pass a tip as a police, patch to one year, so you should say you um, I must see the Maori one now. Mm -hmm. So, already, not to not see, not to start off with police, but to judge, and then police out to see Koko. At times, you don't have the resources. You go to Uber, Uber, Siriki. You are going to wait for an organization which is a Uya, and then marks of phone and I will say, I will say, just so. So, already, what to judge what because of who you are, and then to each other, an issue like DK mentioned. Issue housing child. You find kuti kuto wana pepe kugara pari proper. Ninya the economy and marry these days people tend to share. So I'm a sex worker. The next person is a sex worker. Two gara tiri two. Already it's a twenty two. Opari it's a brother. It's a twenty two. Actually, it's about two gara my sister. But inya e kuti ati na marry. But you can find kuti a banker na. Yeah, was this but she had him, but she was at those friends on Garavis. But the moment Pagara need na she lavari too because they are sex workers, tap twins, we are operating a brothel. And then you also find good even like LBQ women, Maninga actually eat from Papango and Luca and you and Miss Gaiti. I had an incident here, Kue Kumba Pedu, like Pa next Pedu, Pa next Pachona, Pa Gara an LBQ uh, woman, and then number two, move her in. Do you know what you want to wait for Chipfura? I don't know what you want to do. The landlord is going to wait when you're washing, and you're going to put your hands on it. And you're going to put your hands on it. You're going to put your hands on it. Yeah, you're going to put your hands on it. You're going to put your hands on it. So from this time to this time, because it's all mixed up. So she goes on to notice it by so you find good in those things you see society do well for now who I mean my campaigns awareness for them to accept us okay um I think maybe I'll throw this question to Mary 
um, in terms of what do you think are some of the key challenges? I know you have interacted, you've got experiences on national, regional, and global platforms. Sometimes the work that we do, even on a national level, may not get that much attention. But sometimes on a global level, they will listen to us. But at that global level, you, what do you think are some of the key challenges when it even comes to our SRH, our mental health, and just you know issues around body autonomy and rights for queer communities that we are facing as LBQ? The longevity of the support that we get mm. for some of our activities, for some of our communities, is just not sufficient. Um, what has happened is that whether it's locally or regionally or globally, we find that there are gatekeepers. As much as we don't want to use this word, there are gatekeepers to those platforms, mm -hmm. access to those platforms, access to information alone. Um, we are finding that. We have a lot of support and lots of uh, collaboration from maybe our male counterparts in Africa. Mm -hmm. But once we go regional, once we go global, we may not have access to those platforms. Yeah. Our male counterparts are in those platforms, but they still will not raise our mm -hmm. issues. And unfortunately, we are then still left out of mm -hmm. those spaces. Yeah. But we never have the resources or the spaces for us to speak to these issues. Mm -hmm. um, we have always been made to that we should shy away um, uh, from the issue of speaking to funding. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I think you made that comment once when you, when you said, why should we shy away from these conversations? But we have become so conditioned, and we have become so inundated with the work that we are doing, that at times we put down one thing to pick up another. Mm -hmm. And the closing of these platforms, the closing of these spaces, has now moved into the closing of our own spaces. Mm. But we've already moved on to another issue. We've got so many fires burning, and we are trying to put them out ourselves. But we have no support, or at least support that um, is equitable, maybe, support that is uh, sustainable, um, support to speak to our real issues, and support that will allow us to use our own voices. We really want to use our, our own voices. So we, we we will continue to be uh, closed out of these spaces. We will continue to not have access to uh, resources of any kind. Uh, the space in itself is a resource. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not only about money. Uh, resources uh, to information, to training, to learning. We will always lack in that until we are able to access those ourselves. But again, we need the support for us to be able to do that. Yeah. So I just think that I have lost of your no, it's fine. <laughs> you haven't at all. And I think, yeah, I, 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 because, yeah, a lot of times people will, will look at me and say, why did you have to be so blunt about it? But, mm -hmm. yeah, we shouldn't shy away talking about money because money is a political statement. Money is a political tool. And change will come when we speak around money. Um, and also, you know, how do we challenge power? in the different frameworks. So I think for now, we'll take a break and then come to recommendations. The last bit, which is around recommendations. So um, I think we've heard the reflections that you've talked about in terms of the challenges and the spaces that we have worked. Uh, Nede, I want you to if you were today to be in charge of Ministry of Health and you were the, I don't know, the big positions running the Global Fund projects, mm -hmm. or just looking at you are in charge of certain policies that you would want to shift or influencing what's happening even to access to, to, to health, for different communities. What would be some key recommendations that you would put? Just think outside the box. It doesn't have to be something 
just think what what would be one of the key things that you think because that will then turn into an advocacy ask it will, for us it would be something that that you're visioning mm -hmm. and it will be something to advocate <coughs> for what what would you vision to be what would you want to see or even his recommendations yeah <laughs> All right. Uh, when it comes to health for women, there is need. We're going, I'm going right fine. I'm going to run away from issue sensitizer. The doctors, the, the nurses, and the security guards. Oh. <clears throat> sensitize the next person, the immediate person, mm. because we said in that Buddha when the doctor, and they ita my STI. The, next, the immediate person will be the same person that you found 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 that So I think issue is sensitization, and as much as we are sensitizing the nurses, the doctors, we have to start from them. Mm -hmm. We have to start from the immediate person, and then. Uh, issue access in as much as we want our own KP friendly uh, corner or what I think we just have to be mixed mm. somehow in as much as Chinese it's far-fetched and all we have to be accepted but it's not all guarantee I can sit beside particular in the single sorry for this I'm not going to go mm. because to go for one big yeah. yeah, and then it has to be all treated. No, 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 right. no. And then social issue justice, ye, economic yeah. empowerment. Issue yeah. ye, ma partnerships. Uh, we now have to run away from to what I'm as KPs mm. because Trukuns wanana is as KPs, but Tiso are actually never marginalized. We've got because mm. smaller shape, a chat patrona. Yes, we are there. But Trungo and Naka smaller part. So the, the <clears throat> I think there is need for my um, partnership by Ari equity to us we benefit more even though Tiruku push more. For example, you find Kuti there are some women led organizations, my coalitions for example, yeah. for women. Mm -hmm. We need to be accepted there. Panema organizations, for example, Nango. Our is part of Nango. Okay. But then we can talk about the policy and they've got that um, <coughs> women disc when they health. So if I'm to know Pinda as sex workers as LBQ women, Chapinda for women because such a tighter sex worker and such in the I mean LBQ women didn't cut. And then when it comes to health, Tinema issues are true and now. So you find that my issue is a partner other course. Mm. We just need to. Uh, we don't have to be ka island. We can go to our my KPs. To my we are searching ones where are not We also need that. Kakumbo two bagi ya kakumbo shoro so. We are still taking that girl. Then she turns on me. Ah, as we show up, sex with my one. Ah, my ego big. True, but I'm not going to die. Guys, is she? Mm, so mm, yeah. Mm. Yes. Um yeah, I love the way you're watching. It's really around challenging and questioning my partnerships. Because sometimes we we get into bed with people that we're not supposed to be in bed with. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we're just supposed to all be in one big bed and not say Kuti, who's supposed to be in that who's it's a bed, let's all jump in mm -hmm. and be cozy and comfortable in there. So yeah, I love the issue you brought up around partnerships and around how we should also empower ourselves in terms of challenging and questioning and not be vulnerable in an already vulnerable space. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, Gilda, I'll come to you. Um, imagining you were given a platform to use like your experience in writing in art in everything around 
pushing knowledge and getting people to connect in that different kind of way not just you know using the sensitization and the kind of conferencing that we always do sitting around the table in our suits and having biscuits at tea time you're given a, sp a space to to expand the way you would want to see change happening for the work that we're doing what would it look like for you what would be some of the recommendations that as a community would use engaging on social media engaging with different kind of platforms what what would be some of those the key things you'd want to see first of all let's do away with the table mm. like put a fireplace instead or mm. something mm. um there is and I don't know if this comes from like the, the, the artist's instinct to always just rebel. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of choking that comes with formalization of things and like all of this red tape and steps that you have to take, um, who you have to talk to before you get to the other person. Um, there is so much power in, I agree with what um, Nettie. Nettie was saying about like sensitizing the next person. There's so much power in storytelling. Mm. Yeah. There is a lot of power in storytelling. Um, not only do you like get, because it's your story, who's going to jump up and say, no, that's not how being a lesbian works. Mm. I know that lesbians are like this. When I'm the lesbian and I'm on stage and I'm telling my story, mm. right? Um, there's a lot of power in storytelling. So more of that and I don't, <laughs> I also agree with the with the need to like collaborate, but like as DK was talking, sorry, disclaimer, my points may come in like showers because okay. ADHD. Um, but as DK was talking about collaboration and like the need to don't worry about joining the other table, finding a seat there. Let's get back to our table first, mm. right? And like collaborate. How do we do this? It's as simple as my own sangha no hearing this story about the sex worker telling their own story of mm. their own life because mm. ten ten we we are scared of what we're not of what we don't, don't know. know and we don't know because we don't have access to that information and we don't have access to that information because of things like censorship and this is a big deal yeah. Nedi also mentioned reporting I am a professionally trained journalist and these are some of the things that choke the life out of stories before they even see the light mm. of day. Reporting around sex workers and like uh, queer people mm. is always meant to be um, in newsrooms. It's meant to be drama. It's you have to write it from a point of, if you have to write about it at all, it has to be fireworks. It has to be dog bites man kind mm. of news. No, no, man bites dog, dog. kind of news. <laughs> that's how it. Ha that's mm. how you have to put it. Mm. You're not meant to be taking this um, objective side that we're taught to take mm. in journalism school. You're meant to put fireworks. So things like that get in the way of these stories then reaching where they need to mm. get, mm. which then gets in the way of what we want to get. But then if we are by our table, and it's all of us, right? saying no it's cool you're a sex worker you're still a woman you're you're a lesbian you're a woman you're bi you're queer etc what's important is getting together and saying cool i may not understand you for me acceptance is strong and i don't really like it mm -hmm. acceptance and like working for these people to to recognize us and all of that <laughs> that's it Things as minute as a maid being in a house. How do you? Mm. I'm talking like maid during colonial times, black woman in that black and white uniform. Oh. But it's as simple as forcing your way in. Mm. Yeah? Mm. And then when you're in there, you can observe the things. Whether they like you or they don't, they will topple mm. them from mm. in So it's mm. not so much acceptance, it's so much as like putting out your existence. And I know this is like, people are going to say, it's not safe to always live out loud, mm. etc. No. It's... <laughs> I, I, I agree with you. Like, like I said, um, 
I think also a part of my activism was driven by anger and noise and talking. I was never liked in different spaces, which, it's you know, we, yeah, it's great. okay. <laughs> I, I, I really liked the point that you brought up about the importance of storytelling. And I think linking that to, you know, sometimes when we think about even things like reporting at the UN and doing the shadow reports, those are stories. People, they will go into this fancy report that some consultant will write at the end of the day using UN language that we all don't know. But at the end of the day, they are taken from my story. It's, it's a story that I'm going to tell, that they are going to tell some commissioner sitting somewhere in Geneva. But basically, it's a story that we start telling each other and the importance of valuing storytelling. How we shift policies even with these policy makers and whatever. Sometimes it's not about these petitions that we write. It's them hearing our stories and the importance of that. And I really appreciate how you're talking about also the importance of us being able to get into these spaces and not begging for entrance, but just being there and then maneuvering as we are in there. Right. Um, DK, um, I want to hear from you around what do you think would be the value of strengthening a collective network? What do you think is the value of having this, not just uh, collective spaces, but also linking it to how we are interacting with other women's rights organizations as we are thinking around the policy shift and our issues around health, access, economic justice and power. What is it that you would recommend you are you know, running an organization, you're in, you're in the UN, what are some of the values that you think would work in terms of us, the collaborative aspects of our work? Or the recommendations you would bring around collaborating? Okay, so I think the, the, the first value I would actually put, um, like push strongly for, is accountability. Mm -hmm. um, because the you okay, our funders rely on a report that I've written. The United uh, Nations, the, all of these bodies, they rely on a report that was written. We're back to storytelling. Mm -hmm. How good am I at storytelling? Um, how good is our government? And storytelling because at the end of the day um, these treaties and these periodic reviews right now Zimbabwe has to present a list of what's it called a list of demands or a list of wants to the United Nations for economic empowerment um, how many uh, LBQ organizations contributed to that document uh, so I, w I would s sort of like remove the uh, bureaucratic red tapes that can that we can do without. Yes, we need to have specific things in place to guard that not every chaff can come in, but we actually need the real information. But I would probably just push for we are having Zimbabwe and this and this and this country are the ones that are reporting at this particular mm. thing. Instead of us looking for these other group or, or these other regional consultants to write our stories, write our stories. Us, mm. we write mm. our own stories. We say we have LGBT organizations in Zimbabwe, right? write your shadow report. Mm. Similarly to what happened to the UPR process. Do you know that the recommendations that were accepted at the uh, UPR process 
one of which came from the LBQ community, <coughs> was given, um, how can I say, the, pe the people that were credited for putting that in the repair process is not the LBQ community as well. Mm. It's someone else that was <laughs> even credited for that. The <coughs> intersex one, it did come from the intersex. trans and intersex because they, in trans and intersex, they wrote that together. But they got credit for mm. the work that they did. <coughs> the women didn't get their credit. For their yeah, clothes. Yes. Mm. For their clothes, that was there. So now we are in this space where now we are supposed to do advocacy around it becoming a law. Are we still going to be in that space for lobbying for that law that protects us? We won't be in that mm. space. Why? That is information that is not going to come to us. It's going to go to this guy that was credited for, and then this guy causes other guys, black boys. <laughs> we got recognition. We got this thing. Now let's run with this. Um, so I, I feel like we need to read. Yeah. We need to research. We need to build connections. We need to build networks. Yeah. <laughs> that you know that no i have this network and i have this person that's there mm -hmm. we have this understanding and these are people that i can hold accountable mm -hmm. there are women's organization that will invite dk because dk is known to be an lbq activist who invite it because it is known who invite patients to this space the moment I write that register, I was in this space. They'll be like, oh, this person is an LBQ woman. But I went into that space and I didn't know why I was in that space. I invited to this space. So we need to listen. I get an invite. I need to know the agenda to mm -hmm. why I am in that space. Why am I needed in this space? <laughs> if you have said you're working with an LBQ people, I need to come back and hold you accountable. These things. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be afraid to ask the tough questions. We shouldn't be afraid to um, go to people and ask them. You, your website says this. Where is this person that you say you're with? Mm -hmm. What if they benefited from this? <coughs> I think also it then comes. It's. A, it, it comes to a to a question now of bread and butter issues also because we need to feed our families. We will be scared to ask these questions because what if to at the end of the day I don't have the food <laughs> I don't have butter for my bread. I don't even have the bread. Mm. But it's the, I think if we get to that point where we say this is a life and death for me, I will be able to ask those questions and will be able to see the change that we want to have to happen. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll continue on what she was saying. Kuti, <coughs> there is need for us to be, like a, uh, like what was mentioned, Kuti, we also need our own table. We now have to run away from Kunzi Tingori, Tingori, uh, for example, KP Forum. Mm. We can have our own network here, but we've got sex workers and LBQ women. Mm. Mm. Yes, we are marginalized, yes, we are KPs, but then my issues are that true, but I raise her. my raise as a big collective. So, the ones I smash, I can't say, I want this, I want this, I want this. But TDT will understand that. Because you find, kuti, yes, it's an issue here, bread and butter, but then there are big organizations, just because I don't an invite her, no sign her. Register like it. How annoying in this report and see you attach because our donors are not going to report like mm. TK said. So, was actually sure and they are they do work with uh, LPQ women because I say in a TK and then they know which I come in our meeting here for how they know to run your proposal of what funding is just already Marisha and Beijing they go because it's just as KPs at times at Tina the resources. No, mm. when it comes to like applying for funding, I'm with Chiruma 20,000. 
At such times, you can get hundred thousand. You can get so. The charamba tichungo tikiriwa unless tano taura tega tabuda like as a collective as a group. But I know yes to my KPs, but at times, kula na zimswa irongo miririra na sex workers. Shit, but you find kuti maga ya mama kanya la rafut. My issues are not going to see and then just say, actually, is and then one more and one in the very cool. The Avazi Rover community, Avazi Rover Kuti, Pagan's father, which one knows, Banono Tower. Do you have a good tier on the initial? A mere row to do one too. But Pashanu were storytelling, yeah, Pashano Tower, and yeah, you could I or lesbian to Shoshana and Ari to turn now or Kawanda. My Richard and Bacha say. It mm. be just because in Ina won't sign a register. So there is need to quit a research. Mandy invite her, yes. Eh, mm. time said she made a ten dollars at Chona. But people go to Nogota, no, at na meeting. Mm. Even two square trip office, this story now, if I Chona, Tagagara. At times it's better because you find what you married, the children, but the for the wrong cause. Because mm. for them, they've got the funding. But could I not so pinned? Uh, there is an example for it here now. We have to see funding as the we go to our group and we share that name. You are getting the LGBT. So funding now, we are going to share that now. But the person I got to talk about position is going to change. I indeed tend to be demure and be. So the best you can do is to get money from that community. The young girl. So that community in a moon and gashes the canons, you any noise. Stella Kerrigan go never. Pashad the Sirwa story, yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. So at times it's not up to us. Which do we want to be with the umbrella of Tinguaripo? Cannot Taguno? Yeah, I think I'm thanks for that. I'm picking up a couple of issues. I think. One, it was really around the importance for us to read research and be, you know, uh, in contact with what's going on on a national, regional and global level in terms of what are the national reports that are being drafted, how can we be a part of that. And one key space that we need to, for example, we need to always be present is the Women's Coalition of Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. because we have been pushing even like for CSW next year, they're going to do a report. We have to put a clause in there, and they will put it as long as we are present. There's also issues around, you know, what are people, the, the issues around Maputo Protocol, 20 years into Maputo Protocol, what does that mean for us, and how was that an important instrument? So for us to always be reading and researching around that, but for us to also have the networks in the collective space, like DK was saying, was to be sharing together this information. So it's about the linking and learning with each other. And and also, like you're saying, it's around different organizations different doing different kinds of work, but where are we linking all that together to bring it to be a collective advocacy issue? Because if we then, we, we are speaking around Yes, we want to do the recommendations and because, yeah, like people don't even know sometimes even the recommendation in the UPR was credited to somebody else and yet it came from somebody else, you know. So those things, how are we creating these networks for us to do that? I, I hear the issue you're talking around tokenism, mm -hmm. around how even as we are doing, as we are engaging in the different platforms and spaces, for advocacy, whether it's around health or um, economic empowerment for the LBQ and the sex workers, it's how do we challenge issues of tokenism around? We have so many spaces where people would tick the box that was there an LBQ person, yes, and then that's it, it moves on. How do we also, and then I think it links back to the project that you, you, you Rao is doing as well, in terms of questioning even those who are seeking health services, how can we move from it just being also a tokenistic space and a numbers game? Because for a long time, you know, there's also been this talk around as much as people are accessing healthcare services, whether it's at um, 
um, Wilkins or different health service providers with these the desks that were already there. How do we challenge it not being a numbers game and not saying, oh yeah, then the LBQ can, then there were hundreds of them, but to make it a really genuine kind of service. And I think one of the key things, uh, Mary, you mentioned earlier was around um, the reports and how we should utilize those kind of spaces in terms of how do we know how to write a shadow report? What does it mean? Where can we learn it? And how do we... So I think it's one of the key recommendations that you're saying to say, sometimes, yes, we might be sitting on these other bigger tables, but how do we create our own little small tables to teach each other around this? How do we say uh, there's going to be the high-level meeting on HIV? Not a lot of people know that we can, any one of us can participate in that meeting. How do we create those small little tables coming back to the issues of collectives? How do we create those small little tables for us to sit and tell each other that there's a high-level meeting on HIV, you know, that happens in June uh, every year. There's CSW that's coming up next year. There's something that's happening in November. There is a very important space, ICASA, in December. How, you know, how do, how do we link our work to those spaces? So I think like you're recommending, having separate tables, we were also doing our own linking and learning by ourselves and telling our own stories you know, in those different spaces. And um, I think, Mary, if you could also just come in briefly and tell us around what, what it means in terms of some of the reflections that we've had here. What does it mean for the project, I think, moving forward? Um, issues around strengthening the collective learning, telling our own stories, uh, strengthening the networks, uh, questioning and challenging issues around bureaucracy, power, money, and seeing how we also look at not only, you know, sensitization of, you know, policy and above, but also, you know, sensitization of the next person that you're looking at. I was just picking just a few things. Um, how do you think those would then also just link to the spaces that we're in? I think the conversation has been, <coughs> excuse me, very insightful for me. And just listening to all the nuances that have been brought in, uh, not only around issues of health, uh, but also other issues that just bring everything home together with different perspectives. Um, and I like what Gilda said, can we do away with the table of the fire? Mm -hmm. Also, how do we learn to uh, to meet different? Yeah. How do we learn to share, exchange, and learn from each other? Is there a way we can do things differently? When are we able to then sit down and say, what are the best practices? What have we done before? Mm. That we need to do again, or didn't work for us, but we need to do it better. We are not taking our collective knowledge and making one thing. Mm. We are all, we are we, we are all baking. We've agreed that we're all going to bake, and we've all got our own ingredients. Mm. But not once are we thinking. Everybody bring one thing, and let's make the cake. cake. You know. So we're not thinking like like that because we believe and we are. And I think we should take credit for it. We are very strong, we are very courageous, and we have done, we've all done brilliant work in our own rights. But now we need to bring that together. And most importantly, we need to be well while we are doing that. Mm. And it's not only worrying about our HIV. How do we talk to other issues of violence? We have the opportunity to talk about violence. We have the opportunity to talk about how the program is there, it's open. But that doesn't mean that our health is only about our SRHR. My economic justice, my social justice mm. could be linked to my health. Mm. How do we bring those things together? And I think you have said so much 
and everybody's brought in such amazing points that I'm thinking, oh, this works there, this works there, this works there. But I also then, this makes me understand that this cannot only happen like this. Mm. Yeah, and we may not be able to sit like this again, but we need to take it and accept that this is not the way we are only going to learn. Let us find a new way of learning. Let us find a new way of teaching each other outside of this being our workshops. We all need that ten dollars, like we are saying. But we are going into spaces where it is so difficult and painful to have a 20 year relationship or 15 year relationship mm. to find that your partner doesn't even know what your surname is. Mm. Mm. And you can't believe it. It's more painful that you thought you had something, mm. whereas you don't. And <clears throat> it's unfortunate that we want to move to uh, different platforms, but we have to go back first and assess what is the basic package that we are going to accept as a relationship. What is it? Because after all these years, you still go back and somebody says, I actually don't know what, what a lesbian is. Yes. And you're like, no, you can't not know. Mm. You are so shocked that somebody will say that they don't. But we have been partners, we have been friends, we've been speaking for more than five years. Yeah. And partners also bringing, making the space unsafe. We always talk about spaces being safe. You are referring to it now. How do we make our own space? But when our partners make a space unsafe, we should call them out of it. That is also our social justice, mm. calling out to our partners. I cannot go into a space and you have brought a team in that are making me understand I am from church. You don't feel a batch. I am married to a man. I have children. It's a girl and a boy. That already has silenced me, but I need more space. That makes the space unsafe for me. We should be able to have these conversations with our partners. And I think uh, you have all brought in so many elements that we can take away from. And But for me, I just feel that it's, it's, it's not enough. And again, I don't think that that's <laughs> No, you have. And I think, um, Flo, just to... What are some of the key, two key <coughs> reflections that you, you you think could be taken further into making it a big dream into this project and going beyond? Okay, uh, I think for me, the two points are three things I think maybe one last one sentence from our panelists. 
<laughs> that could turn into a hashtag, or <laughs> one key <laughs> sentence or reflection that you just want to share. Could be a sentence, a couple of words, anything. Anyone can start. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for me, it's going to be all women matter, uh, irregardless of your physical stature, your occupation. All women, all women matter. matter. Thank you so much, Nick. Okay. Can I just do two? Sure. Okay. Um, these are like personal the statements that I live by mm -hmm. so the first one goes um, there is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people around you don't feel small mm -hmm. we're all meant to shine as children do and oh. then the other one um, I forgot who this one is from and the first one too actually um, but it says um, the only way to be free in an unfree world is to be so radically, like a radical version of yourself, mm -hmm. right? Like not asking for permission, not looking for acceptance, not paying any mind to anything else. Apologize. Speaking to your authenticity. Well, thank you. Okay. Um, so this statement just came to me when uh, Flo was, was uh, talking about the, the three takeaways from, the, uh, from this dialogue and it voices tell stories, mm -hmm. stories bring change. Voices tell stories, <laughs> stories bring change. Oh, yeah. T-shirts. Thank you. T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtags. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think for me, uh, thank you so much, and thank you so much Ra, for the space. And I think one of my parting wa words for everyone is, um, as we are doing this work and reflecting on what we do, I think we should always be crossing some kind of line, because if we're not crossing a line, we're not moving. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't make people upset, if we don't get people angry or you know challenge something it means we're not moving so if we're not crossing a line so we should not have any ifs or buts or sorry so apologies or guilt or sorry those are wasted emotions that we shouldn't move with when it comes to organizing a movement building so if we do something and there are no upset people along the way and we're not crossing a line, it means we're not getting change. Yeah. So for me, it really goes to the anger and everything and letting that be a positive kind of um, emotion. So thank you so much. I hand it back over to Mary and Flo. Um, thank you very much. And I think earlier on you introduced um, uh, the panelists. You didn't get a chance to introduce the panelists. Um, and I think that was <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Patience Agnes Shichanaka Chete Mandishwana, a mouthful. I'm a um, feminist first, social rights activist. Um, I think I, I have, I see myself as one of those people who has, you know, allowed myself to be in a space where I could grow in different kind of ways, you know. I could grow from just being crazy and angry and, you know, challenging spaces to also being in a place where I could use the kind of knowledge that I've gained over the years to also impact on the different kind of uh, platforms and spaces that I engage in. I, yeah, I've been organizing for a couple of years and I think parts of, like I said earlier, what drives me in terms of 
moving forward is seeing the kind of change that people have been are doing now using different methods. Yeah, we used to be the ones that got arrested in trade trade. Now people do it differently and it's beautiful, you know, the kind of organizing that's happening now. And we kind of tend to be at the back, you know, behind a computer and doing that. But yeah, organizing and movement building has been my my kind of uh, work for, for a long time now. So that's me. And I think, yeah, oh, this is not recorded, cut this out. <laughs> when TK was mentioning dinosaurs, mm -hmm. I think I'm one of those, those dinosaurs. Yeah, not one. <laughs> <laughs> I think now I'm like, you know, those, those but my pyramids in Egypt, uh, yeah, my mommies. Mommy. I'm a mommy, I'm slowly <laughs> disintegrating into sand. <laughs> but yeah, lovely. Thank you, guys. I think it was a lovely so conversation. Take from you, thank you so much. Follow your lead in continuing to create the safe spaces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 Thank so that we can come and have these discussions, we can come and learn, and we can come and say, I don't know. We can be vulnerable amongst each other so that we learn. But the space has to be safe for us to have to be able to do that. So and creative and fun. And fun. It's not just work. We always are saying, we don't open up to us, it's not us. That's what we want to do. We want to go five days to any other period of us. And we get there and, and do nothing. <laughs> because it's a job for us to get well. So that is also work. And we must think about always how do we root our work in the wellness. So I'm now going to ask Flo to now close. I think I'm done. I saw teddy bears and gifts, so I don't know what that's about.